Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. So, let's talk about a bit of a machine that I've built for you. IP address will be in the description below. If the machine is offline, send me a message and I can restore it to its original state. Now, please don't kill my machine with unlimited scans. Let's do a normal Nmap scan first. Let's see what's open. So, we have dash sc dash sv and let me enlarge it for you guys a little bit so you guys know what the hell's going on okay this is the first thing that i'm gonna do even if i'm on an assignment this is just the first thing that i'm going to do so i have my ip address here and i'm going to scan that specific ip address see what ports are open this should never be your only action so while that's going on open another connection to your server and let that thing run let that thing do its course and then we're going to scan for all of the ports. But this time what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove that dash sc dash sv scripts and banner enumeration by the way. And while that's running I can see some output from this side already. Very first thing, I did scripts. So Nmap is also a scripting engine. It's going to see port 21 TCP is open. Oh, it's going to try its scripts then. And it says anonymous FTP is allowed. That sounds juicy, doesn't it? So let's try to make a little bit of a connection to our server through FTP. Now, when you do that, just FTP, username anonymous. Anonymous. Password empty. There we go. We are in the file system. Now you can try to upload stuff there. You can try to download stuff there, read there. This is a rabbit hole. This is why it's called Hidden Killer. 22 open. Okay? What do you guys do when you see 22 open? Please pause the video and look it up. Do some basic stuff like try to log in with basic username passwords etc i'll try that later try to brute force with hydra so those are some things that you can do on tcp now we have port 25 also open smtp look up what you can hack on smtp always look at these version numbers as well if they are available so we can see this is a version number so what am i going to do i am just going to look up that version number and I'm going to see exploit and the first thing I see authenticated RTE am I authenticated no so skip for now but remember this one for later might be useful so I'm going to save it here we have another one that seems maybe some as vulnerable just look at the versions arbitrary module load metasploit why not try metasploit right if the script exists just try it Make sure that the platform is set correctly, of course. Now, that is Samba. I can tell you it's not vulnerable in this version. And then we have SMTPS and Submission. What the hell is that, right? So, that's a, a whole mouthful. Now, for this specific scan, I didn't directly find anything that might be vulnerable. My other scan is still going on. That is scanning all of the ports. While that's going on, I'm going to start, well I'm going to exit my FTP of course, and I'm going to start a new scan. But this time I am going to include the UDP ports. Look at that my friends, another scan going while I can investigate these results. I should have even started that sooner. Now we talked about that 22 SSH already, so do we have another uh, terminal window available? No, let's open another one. All right, we're going to try and secure shell into our server. SSH, what shall we try, guys? Root, at, and then the IP address, 212.71.251.30. All right, let's see. Ooh, we have a fingerprint added. We have a password that is being added. So let's just try password. Does it work? Probably not in this case. Let's try another one, admin. Let's try just test. You know, just keep on trying until you eventually find a good username password combination. 
While that's going on, we can see some more stuff in our full port scan. Now look at this one, my friends. This one wasn't available, remember? In the original one, we had 587 as the last one. In our full port scan, we have a lot more. Well, we have one port available extra. So what do we do by that? Of course, we can make a telnet connection to that port. And then we can see if we can find out some more information about it. We can do the nmap as C as V and then dash P985 uh, and then the IP address 212712512 and as the last one, no, yep, sorry, I just have to see that I have the right one, 25130. There we go, and it's going to try and get some banner enumeration information from that. Next thing you should always try, you already saw it probably in my browser, but if you open it up, you should just navigate there. In here, you'll find more stuff, admin, which will trigger local file inclusions. But here's the kicker. The local file inclusion is going to be as the www data user, so you can never get to slash root slash flag. Hey, hidden killer, right? But there is local file inclusion, so if you're pen testing for me, make sure that you do everything. Don't stop at the basics. Make sure that, okay, I found local file inclusion now. I'm going to try some other things, maybe cross-site scripting, maybe SQL injection. You never know. Then we move on to the hidden killer directory. Here we have three files. Now we can see that there is indeed some cross-site scripting. We can trigger it definitely. But remember, it's not because of cross-site scripting that we are here. The thing is, we are here because of command injection. And that can definitely be deadly. You need to get a reverse shell connection so that your WW data. Not the intended solution, however. I try to filter that out, try to get in that way if you can. That If you can, please let me know because I'm trying to, to stop people from going in from the, uh, the command injection prompt. Maybe I need to limit the amount of characters that can be entered or something. Anyway, so I have this here now. Okay, I have explored it all. Now I need to also in the background run my Nikto file because I can see that there is a web server running on it. So I go Nikto 212.71.25130 and then I give a semicolon with the port number 985. Run Nikto on all of the hosts and I forgot to add dash dash or dash host. Nikto dash host. There we go and Nikto is running. Now always, always, always look at that stuff. It says that itself already. Directory indexing found. Shouldn't be enabled. Tell the client to disable this. And the click checking extreme options header is not present. Tell the client to add this. Server gives out its information. Tell the client to stop that. Do not broadcast that kind of information. So these are all very, very important things to try. Now we were trying a little bit on that secure shell front already. Now let's go back and see if we can maybe force that a little bit more. Of course you can Hydra, but don't forget that there is more than just root in life. <clears throat> There's also admin. And often companies will either do admin, admin, or what they'll do is they'll use a word like their company name and misform it and then just use it like that. You can do that with cool. You can create permutations of certain lists that you find with cool and then you can permutate them with John the Ripper. So really, really cool functionality. Password here, admin, admin. So you have username, admin, password, admin. Then you have ls. Now the thing is, now you need to run Linux, uh, enum for Linux. How are you going to get that on here on your system? Well, on one server that you have available, you need to set up a Python simple HTTP server, for example, and then you can just curl it over here. So you go curl and then the IP address of your lab server there. And then you can do, I'm not going to do it right now because I want to leave this step for you guys. IP slash file dot sh, for example, and then it's going to grab that file. Then you need to, if you've done that, you need to change mod because you need to make your file executable 
and then file.sh. You see? And then afterwards you run this and you'll find that. <coughs> Pause the video now if you don't want to hear a solution. Nano has the SUID bit set. Find that out through Linux, uh, Edom for Linux. Do that. Make sure that you do these steps because these are important. Downloading files from one server to another, making sure that you look further than your eyes can see. All very, very important skills to learn, not just like the basic boxes. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Then you can use nano to read the slash root slash flag.txt and you deserve a freaking cheese cookie. Thank you very much my friends for watching. I really appreciate your enthusiasm for the channel and I guess I will see you in the next one. Oh, one more thing before I go. We also do pen testing. If you're interested in a specific pen test, feel free to let me know at info at the xssred.com. If you give us the information that you have, we'll make a custom quote for you and then we'll get back to you in a meeting. Thank you very much, my friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.